Did you ever worry about whether the glass is half empty or more like half full? Well, worry no more because this is a thing of the past. With this device, your glass will always be full. In today's episode, I'll show you my attempt at building an automatic drink dispenser. Stay tuned. We all know the problem. We're sitting for hours on the keyboard trying to find that one bug that's been eluding us while slowly dehydrating. We're not daring to take the hands off the keyboard to refill our drink. Oh, I'm so thirsty, I can't take my hands off the keyboard. Wish someone would fill it up for me. But worry no more. This one guy working at Labstream found the perfect solution for us. Introducing the Waterboy 3000. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the design process of this device. We've seen the use case before, we're thirsty, our glass is empty, we need it to be refilled somehow, but we don't have the time to do this ourselves. So what we want is a device that pumps some liquid from any container, in this case a bottle, to a glass which is empty. We want to place it on there. We want this device to pump as much liquid in this until the glass is full and we can drink again. So two devices or two considerations are to be made here. One is we need a device that pumps a liquid and the second is we need a way to measure how much liquid is in a cup or glass. Now for the measuring part, I'm a computer scientist working in AI and computer vision. So my first idea was to just have a top mounted camera that looks inside a glass, finds a circle in there and then determines whether the glass is full or empty. The problem with this approach would be we need a lot of compute power to do the visual computing task and we need another camera or another device mounted on top, so that's a no-go for this use case. The second idea would be to have some swimmer like in a gas tank of a car, but that's kind of unhygienic and uh, would get really fiddly if we, if we need to place the glass in here then put a swimmer in there, so that's also a no-go. Instead I decided to go with just measuring the weight. So how can we measure a weight and get it in a digital form inside a microcontroller to act on it? The answer is simple, it's a load cell. So in here I have mounted a load cell. Which looks like this. I'll unscrew it from the bottom. So this little load cell is specified to measure one kilogram, up to one kilogram actually. This is stainless steel bar with two, two holes in the middle, as you can see here. And we have four wires going to it. And this type of load cell can measure measures weight by um, so-called strain gorges. Those are very thin wires that run on the top and on the bottom of this device. And by measuring, indirectly measuring the resistance of these wires that run through here, we can estimate the weight or the strain that is put on this steel bar because whenever this is bent ever so slightly, the, down, the downside strain gorge will be compressed and the upside strain gorge will be tensioned, which means pulled apart. So they change their resistance and this can be measured by the microcontroller. But because this resistance change is ever so small, it's in the range of millivolts, we need an amplifier for this, which you can see here. This one is the HX711. It's an amplifier that works with a Wheatstone bridge. You can look that up in the internet, I won't explain it now. And with this little device we are able to amplify these little changes in resistance or in voltage that I just showed you and read them over a serial connection with the Arduino. Whenever I'm dealing with such small solar joints or really thin wires, I like to put a drop, a drop of hot glue on them just to stabilize them and keep them from breaking or ripping apart. The 
hot glue is non-conductive so you don't have to worry about any shorts and you can just peel it off anytime if you want to change the wiring. So in order for this to work the bar needs to be mounted on this side and it needs some space under it to be bent a little. So what I did in this design I built a small platform in here which a bar resides on basically and this little and this little blade which goes on top which also has a little platform underneath so we have a little space on top so if this bends down it won't touch the, the back side of the bar for transporting the liquid from the container to the glass I'm using a peristaltic pump I'll take this apart now to show you how it works all right what we have here is a regular 12 volt DC motor nothing spectacular the mechanism itself is housed in this little housing which we can also take apart and take a look inside. Now with the bottom blade removed we can see the flexible tube which goes in on one side, makes this little circle and goes out on the other side. And the way this peristaltic pump or peristaltic pumps in general work is that we have these three earrings in here or three wheels and the motor will spin them and what they and they will as you can see they, they press on this flexible tube and when they spin they will press the liquid through this in a circular motion and they will press on here move around keeping the pressure and, and release the liquid on the other side so the liquid will get pressed through this hose through this flexible tube and uh, exit on the other side Now the cool part with peristaltic pumps is that the pump mechanism itself never comes in contact with what you are transporting so we can use this for any food we desire as long as the tubing is actually not uh, not a health hazard itself the not so cool part is that these pumps are not really fast so they, the amount of liquid we can transport through this um, in one minute is approximately I think 100 to 200 milliliters as per specification. Now this motor takes something like 500 milliampere. I measured this on my power supply I have. So I decided to go for L293D as a motor driver which can take up to one ampere per channel. And this is a really easy and small solution. So I opted for that. Now in my iteration number one, which is what you see here, um, I plan to put a load cell in here, as uh, I already been showing you, and put the other comp components around here so that everything is nicely enclosed with this blade on top. Uh, well, I soldered my own circuit board using these funny things which you can solder yourself which I just lost but that's no loss at all because it didn't work and I actually burned an Arduino with this uh, thing and in lack of having others other circuit boards that I could use um, I'm stuck to presenting you this on a prototype board on a breadboard so uh, video number two will probably show you all the all the little chips integrated into a probably newly designed case now for designing the enclosure I went with open SCAD as always and my trusty old measurement caliper. Um, the base is actually two parts. One is a cylinder with six sides using the FN command. The other is the same and I made the other one a little smaller to account for some tolerances while printing. So I made this one or two millimeters smaller than the other. This one is just a cube in open SCAD. And now for the for the dispenser straw where the where the flexible tube goes in. This is the bottom part is just a regular cylinder also six-sided to keep the style and the upper part is just a sweep of a circle with a cutout of a circle and in order to be able to print this on one side I just cut out using a rectangle I just cut out this little slit here so I can print it on this side 
and don't have any overhangs or difficulties to print. And this is designed to mount in the little recession which I spared out on the base here. So I can just put it in here and it snaps fit. And then I can put it all together. So for those of you who want to build it themselves, um, here's the circuit diagram I built with Fritzing, which shows you how to connect the hardware. I will not go into detail with this. You can find all the data sheets online and um, just grab a snapshot of this circuit diagram or download it from a GitHub repository, which I'll link down below. Now, before you rush off and order all these parts and try to build this project yourself, here are some words of warnings. Um, this project, I don't consider it a 100% success, but merely a step in the right direction for this mechanism. Um, there are several factors or some shortcomings that I noticed during the build process. One is the Arduino Pro Micro, which I chose because of the very small form factor. Remember, I wanted to put all these in the casings. Um, if you power this guy directly from 12 volts, it's becoming really unstable and I burned three of those during my build process without having any shortage or anything except from this other board I showed you before. Um, but actually in this iteration now I have a, my own linear voltage regulator 7805 which handles which steps down the, the 12 volts which I need for the motor to 5 volts for the Arduino. And since then everything went pretty pretty stable but it's one more component you need to build inside there. Another factor you have to consider is that these peristaltic pumps they don't move a lot of liquid. So while the specification says it moves 200 milliliters per minute um, it's actually far less than that. I compiled this short experiment for you where I tried to fill a complete class and I measured the time it takes. So as you see in this little experiment, um, the class took 350 milliliters. We took nine minutes for this, which makes it uh, something like 100 milliliters per three minutes actually instead of 200 milliliters per minute which is pretty disappointing and as always if you enjoyed today's episode as much as i did please consider leaving a like subscribing to my channel leave a comment down below tell me what you liked what you didn't like or leave some ideas or suggestions for future projects thanks and bye bye